This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and in this tutorial we're going to be creating a very interesting wave pattern that doesn't make use of any complicated or expensive plugins, but many people think it needs to be generated by a trap code form or something like that. But in actuality, it's just a shape layer with a repeater that's doing some pretty wacky stuff. So I'll try to unravel some of the mysteries of this thing and uh, let's get into it. So here in After Effects, we are looking at the project file. And what we have here is basically, it is a shape layer where we have a path and the path itself is uh, changing over time and the path itself is changing over time. But the things that are very interesting are, for example, things like the repeater how many copies it's making, and what those copies are doing over time. So we're going to go through this step by step and show you how to build interesting things and some subtle changes and variations, making use of the repeater to create these wonderful arcing, moving sort of uh, lines everywhere. They can be great for use in backgrounds and to create interest in otherwise vacant space. So the first thing to do is to create a new composition. We're going with 30 seconds long, HDTV 1080 29.97 seconds. Now we're going to create a new solid to serve as our background. It's going to be like a light gray, sort of a light gray blue here. So we're going to be uh, here firmly in the blue to teal range and uh, saturation low and brightness quite high. Okay. Now I'm going to create a new shape layer. All right. And in this shape layer, I'm going to just take the pen tool and draw out a curve just like this. A nice, a nice subtle curve, nothing really to it. Just right out here in the middle of everything. It's not going to have a fill. So make that go away, but it is going to have a stroke. Okay. And the stroke is going to be one of these linear gradient strokes. So this linear gradient, I want to run from the one end here to the other end all the way down here. Now this gradient, as you can see, you can just click and drag, pull these handles around. You can edit by clicking up here and I'm going to set both of the colors to be black. And I'm going to set the ending opacities, both ends over here to be zero. And I'm going to set one opacity here in the middle at 50% to be at 100%. Okay, so that creates something like this that is see-through on the ends and visible in the middle. And the thickness of the line is going to be two. So a nice thin wispy line given the size of our composition. Now, I'm going to take you through how to create the look that we're after. In terms of animating it, it's going to be just a matter of taking the values we put in and then offsetting them on either end and uh, you'll see how it goes as we get into it. First thing we need to do is add that repeater. So we add the repeater and the first thing you can see is that the repeater doesn't look all that interesting. Let's first set the copies here up to about 100. So there are a lot of copies. Now we're going to get into the transformation of that repeater by altering the position of this repeater to only offset things by 10 and 10. So it's creating a whole bunch of very close together things. Now we're going to also change the ending opacity to be zero. So as they get further away, they're going to get closer to zero. And now the big kicker is the rotation. I'm going to set a rotation of two. Now you can see what that does automatically is it starts to create this curve through the piece that they're curving that way. All right. See what happens when I start putting this up to things like three, like four, like five starts to get even more complicated, all right? And then lower yet to one, to zero, and then into the negatives, we start to see spirals going this way, all right? So just keep those in mind that we are at two. Now if we start to use even finer control, you can see there's a lot of subtle variation here that even looks interesting. All right, so we're setting that to two and we're setting the scale to 99. That means that each subsequent copy is going to be 99% of the first copy. And most of the animation is going to come through animating the offset, all right? And that's gonna cause things to look like they're spiraling through and towards the camera, okay? So let's start off with an offset of zero. We've created more or less the look we're after right here with this sort of tube of overlapping undulating stuff that is 
very complicated, it's very interesting, and now we just have to animate it to really bring out some of those qualities that we're interested in. All right, so the position, we're fine with it hanging out here. We're going to animate the offset for sure from something like uh, maybe like 100 to uh, here at 10 seconds, we would like it to be at uh, negative 100. So it's got a long time to sort of cruise through and do some things and undulate. That's totally fine. And on the way through, our current value for position, let's uh, subtract this a little bit. Let's go 8 and 8. And when it ends, I would like it to end at uh, 12 and 12. So the uh, in-between value would be 10 in there somewhere. Okay. The rotation, let's start it off at 1 and let's have it end. Uh, let's have it end at 3. So somewhere in the middle, it's going to cross through that number 2 that we were interested in. Now the scale, likewise, I'd like to start at 101, and I would like it to end very neatly at 99, like this. So that means that that is going to be constantly changing as it spirals through. Cool. Now the last thing I want to sort of do to this path is to animate the path as it's coming through from being an S-curve at the beginning to being a regular sort of curve, just curving up gently in this direction. So, as it goes, the curve is changing, a lot of the properties are changing, and everything is moving. Now we're also going to do some things to the regular properties, like the position, the scale, and rotation. So call those up by hitting P, S, and R. So its ending position, I think, should be somewhere off here. And its beginning position should be somewhere over here. You can change the rotation angle to be a little bit like this, you know, 32 degrees. So as it comes in, everything is changing. And as it ends, we would like it to be at uh, perhaps like a, a negative 32 number. Okay, so we're just gonna take this drag a little bit further like that, okay? The scale, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger as it ends. So it starts at 100, ends at 116. So everything is growing and getting interesting. And it has constant movement as it's coming through, cool. And that should be about it to create something interesting and weird. So this pattern continues to push and move through and be very confusing and undulating. However, the big thing that we want to do with this is really to get these patterns, right? And these patterns are caused simply by the overlap of lines many, many times, and it creates the illusion of depth and space. And that illusion is helped greatly because of the gradient that we put on that fades into the background and that the older pieces are transparent and the newer pieces are opaque. So it makes them seem like they're more in the foreground. It's adding depth and character to this piece. But all in, that's all you need to do to smooth this thing along. One thing I would recommend is that you easy ease the ending keyframes just to give yourself more time with more of the interesting parts of the animation, but the rest of it is really gonna come out of experimentation on your part and figuring out what works best for the piece that you are composing. But this is how you can save yourself a couple of bucks by not getting trap code form and perhaps faking the thing that you are after creating all along. So this is a pretty simple way. People have been doing this since uh, old Windows 95 screensavers. I remember a screensaver that looked kind of like this and it was very interesting. This has been Evan Abrams for premiumbeat.com, your source for royalty-free sound effects and music. If you want to see more tutorials on Premium Beat, check out the blog. There you'll find tutorials by not only myself on After Effects, but other people about After Effects and other people about other subjects. There's just a whole wealth of information there. And if you want to see more of my tutorials specifically, check out evanabrams.com, hit me up on Twitter at ecabrams, or check out my YouTube channel, uh, ecabrams on the YouTubes. That's, that's good stuff, I'm told. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Subscribe to all of Premium Beats content to get, to get regular updates and new tutorials when they come out. And uh, if you're subscribed, then I'll probably see you next week and around the internet for more stuff. Thanks again for watching, and have a nice day.